Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2Design. In this video, I will show you how to get rid of a rotation popping while using an IK constraint. As some of you may know, I've released a new course to create a character and I'm currently recording the next course that will be focusing on uh, rigging. So my goal is to go really in depth into rigging, not only on this character, but on other topics too so that you get full insight into rigging and that you can grasp the philosophy of rigging because my goal is not to uh, tell you do this do that and then you just don't understand what you've been doing but to uh, know what are the mechanics of rigging so i will put my best into it and hope you'll enjoy it and along the way I will try to provide some free videos like this one showing how to solve some troubles or uh, showing some tips. If you're curious about that, just follow me on Twitter and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content during the next month. Without further ado, let's jump into this uh, short tip video. First of all, what is the problem we are uh, talking about? It's when you are using an IK constraint, which is really common for leg and arm rigging, for example. When you straighten your rig to the maximum, you will get this popping into the articulation. And this is because at a certain threshold, uh, the rotation speed will increase to infinity. I guess this is because in the IK solver algorithm, there must be a value that is divided somehow by zero at this very moment. And you can see on the left, when I reach a certain level of straightening, the knee just pop backward, while on the right, it's bending more smoothly and more slowly. So to make things more clear, I've isolated this leg rig from my character. So for the time being, this is just deformation bones and there are some corrective shape key to have better deformation, but this is not the topic. And what I will do into edit mode is first duplicate this wall leg chain because I don't want to work directly onto my deformation bones. So I will press shift D and move them by 0.5 value on the y-axis and I will rename this new chain with the prefix target or TGT because this will be uh, the chain or the bones that we will constrain and then we will apply a copy transformation to our deformation bones so that if you have any drivers or stuff like this onto your deformation chain uh, it will still work when using parenting, you may mess up all your drivers. Well, when you copy the transformation of a bone onto another one, uh, you will keep those transformation into the channel of the deformation bones. So it might sound a bit weird here, and it's not uh, really the topic, but whatever, you can see that I'm just adding a copy transform constraint to each bone and we'll switch the last one to local to local to avoid it to be snapped onto the leg. So now I will get back into a tint mode and duplicate those two and move them by a 0.5 value onto the Y axis. This will be our MCH or mechanism IK chain. So don't worry if I go too fast here, I'm just showing you the tip. Uh, when it will come to the course, I will get slower and explain every functions and stuff like this. So I'm now renaming my bone correctly and then I will extrude the new bone on the Y axis from the tip of this chain so that we have our IK controller. So currently the IK allow you to uh, make a chain of bone bending and following a single bone and this allow you to get complex animation, let's say, or complex mechanism moving only one bone. So I've just pressed Alt P to clear the parenting from this bone. Then in pause mode, I press Control Shift to C and set an invert kinematic. I will set the chain length to two because there are two bones involved here. And now I can see this chain following the IK controller while I'm moving it. 
On the first bone of the chain, I will lock into the bone option. There is an invert kinematic stack. I will lock Y and Z axis so that now uh, the bone only rotates on its X axis, the first one, the knee, let's say, and I can rotate the thick bone uh, to give the orientation to the knee. So this is very interesting because usually you will uh, use a pole target, which is a flying bone, let's say, an unconnected bone that will be used as a target for the knee to point to. And Dan Pro was really inspiring for me about this because he said, okay, in animation, this is not really interesting because you have to deal with the location of a bone into space and this is not really um, intuitive. While the rotation of the thing on an axis is really better uh, for animation. And as I'm, I've been anim doing animation this whole year and I will still be doing this and I want to uh, record a big course about animation later on. Uh, this kind of input where people say, okay, you can do this, you can do that, but this way <laughs> is really uh, better and more intuitive for the animator. I think it's the right philosophy. So instead of using the, um, the classical IK uh, pole target, I've just uh, locked the first axis onto the shin bone so that uh, it can't bend onto the side and try to bend your knee on the side that will be really painful and uh, then I can rotate the sig and the knee will follow so here I'm just setting a loop animation so that we can see uh, the problem occurring I can now set a copy rotation from our MCH IK to our target bone and the wall chain will follow so now we can see everything is animated and I have this popping issue onto the knee, which is uh, very obvious here. So now here is the trick. Into the bone option in the IK panel, there is this stretching option. And whenever you increase it, it will make the bone attached to the IK controller to be stretched. And there is a thing uh, that I figured, so I absolutely don't know why, but if you increase this value upon 0 0.1, the stretching will override the rotation and the bone will prefer uh, stretching than rotating. But if you keep it below 0 0.1, let's say 0 0.05, you will still have this rotation mechanism, but as Blender will stretch the bone when it reach our uh, critical rotation value, we will lose this popping effect. So by uh, setting a 0 0.5 value here, a 0 0.05, sorry, on both bone, I get rid of this popping issue. And as you may remember, we have used a copy rotation from MCH IK chain to our target bone meaning that it won't be uh, influenced by the scaling which occurred when the bone is stretched. It will only be affected by the rotation. So we keep our rotation function, which is perfect, and we don't get the stretching. This is why I prefer to use a copy rotation instead of a copy transform. And then if we want to get the stretching for a cartoony uh, style, we just have to set on top of this a copy scale, which we will do, and then set a driver with a custom property so that we can say, okay, now I want stretching, and here I don't want stretching. So this is one important thing in ringing. It's to give the more option possible to the animator. So a good rigger will uh, allow the animator to do everything to his character, but he will also make sure that he has the choice and he can limit most of the function when they are useless so that he don't have to keyframe everything. So let's now add the copy scale from our MCH IK to our target uh, bones. We can uh, keep it to world space or set it to local space. It doesn't matter as the bone will be 
overlaid one on top of each other later on. And I will just uh, keep the Y scale so that we have the stretching effect and not our leg getting bigger and bigger. It will look more natural. There is a little issue though is that our foot is also uh, getting stretched, which is not natural. We just want the fig and the shin to be stretched. So what I will do is go into edit mode and I will clear the parent from our target foot. I will then extrude a single bone from the shin and I will tell the foot just copy the location of this bone so that it will still follow the shin but uh, it won't be affected by the stretching. I will also add after the copy location a copy rotation so that the foot uh, still rotates around this but his scaling is isolated and this will allow me later on to set up a rotation a constraint and controller for the foot and also the IK chain but we won't be uh, seeing this into this uh, short tip video. I will get back into edit mode and add a new bone that will be our property bone. Uh, he will just serve to store the different uh, properties, custom properties we'll be creating. So in this case, it will be the copy scale that will allow us to enable or disable the stretching onto the leg. I prefer to store the properties onto a bone so that they are accessible whenever I want to keyframe them into an action. So I can now go into the bone properties, go to custom properties and add one, edit it, give it a relevant name like uh, IK stretching and press the OK button so that it is stored. If you just press enter it will uh, just pop like this. Okay, So I have to <laughs> do it again. I will then right click and copy the data path. So I can't do this because I've made a mistake. I added the custom properties while I was into edit mode. So here I've switched to um, to pose mode and re-add the property, rename it and call it IK stretch, press the OK button. And now I will be able uh, to copy the data path. So make sure that when you create your custom properties, you're in pose mode. I will now go onto my constraint copy scale and into uh, the influence I will right click and add a driver and choose manually create later. I will then open the graph editor which is already set to drivers, select my latest driver. Into the driver option I will switch to average value, select single properties and the armature and then past the data path we have copy, copy before, copied before, I don't know. I can now uh, right click on my driven influence and copy the driver and pass it onto the uh, shin bone. So now I have the stretching effect working and when I lower the property, the custom property of our uh, property bone, I can get rid of the stretching. So now I will get back into edit mode and I will just move on the y-axis the chain we have created. The first one on the negative value of 0 0.5 and the second one on the negative value of 1 so that everything is aligned and I've also um, organized them using the bone layer management add-in uh, to make things clearer and so that I will just uh, isolate my controllers and I will be able just to show them. Then I can uh, test my rigging and see if everything is working properly. So le let's have a rapid summary of what we have done. Our deformation bones have a copy transform from our target bones. Our target bones have a copy rotation and a copy scale from our MCH IK chain and then I have isolated the scaling of the foot by duplicating a bone 
and then constraint to target foot with a copy rotation and copy location. We are now done with this uh, video tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, don't hesitate to put uh, some comments, even if it doesn't pay the bills, honestly, this is uh, really heartwarming and motivating whenever I have uh, feedbacks from you. And I just want to let you know that my latest course is uh, available for sure. And uh, this is the last day today with the Cyber Monday promotion. So make sure you grab a copy of it at uh, a discounted price. Hope to see you very soon. And let me know if you have any needs of short tutorials like this. I'll make my best to uh, provide them to you.